first came here in 1971 when I was a senior in high school. And I was a recruiting trip to visit Indiana. Bobby Knight had just gotten the Indiana job. We picked up the Indianapolis airport. We drove down here and said, you're going to love this place. It's beautiful. And I hope you've seen the same thing I saw when I first came here. How, how neat a place it was. And, uh, it still is today. So um, I got to play here four years. Uh, well, in school four years. Freshmen weren't eligible. The last year, freshmen were eligible to play basketball in college. Next year, 72, we could play all four years. I only got to play three years. Um, but it was, uh, uh, it was a great experience. We had some great teams. We had some records that have been broken or have been set that have never been broken yet. We went undefeated in the Big Ten two years in a row, 18 and 0. Never happened since. Probably never happened again. 37 straight Big Ten uh, wins. Probably never happened again. Um, at the time, you don't realize how big that is, but as time goes on, you think, well, what's wrong with these teams? How come nobody can do that? Well, you realize, man, that was pretty good. That was, that was over 45 years ago. So that uh, that worked out well. After I got out of IU, I played for Chicago Bulls two years. Uh, I was drafted 32nd in the draft. It was early in the second round. And you guys have seen the draft. You go to New York, you got your posse with you, and they call your name, and put the hat on, you walk out, you meet the, meet the commissioner, and you know, it's just unbelievable. In 1975, it was a little different. In fact, after, uh, after I got through IU, I got a job at a company in downtown Indianapolis, and I'm at work. I've been there a month now. Well, the boss comes by, and it was about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. There used to be an afternoon newspaper in, in, in Indianapolis, a morning paper, afternoon paper. And he said, have you seen this after this afternoon's paper? And I said, no. He flopped it on my desk. He said, Laskowski drafted by NBA Bulls in second round. I read it in the paper. Didn't know it was draft day. Nobody called to say they were thinking about taking me. They didn't buy me to New York to, to get a hat. I read it in the paper. I mean, think about that. You guys don't read the paper anymore. That's how I found out I was in the NBA. And the next day, Dick Mata, the coach of Chicago Bulls, called me. He got my number somehow and said, I'm at work again. He goes, hey, Dick Mata, I just we drafted you. I said, I know, I read it in the paper. He said, we want to sign you to a contract, and they did. I played two years for the Chicago Bulls. That was pretty neat. So after that, um, Coach Knight asked me to uh, be a TV commentator for IU basketball on TV. And he said, look, he said, uh, you know the offense, you know the defense. I'm trying to educate people in Indiana on what we're doing here, you know, why we're doing this. So don't tell them what we're doing. Tell them why we're doing it so they understand what's going on. And I said, well, I understand all that, Coach. You know, I've been around here four years, and you drilled it into me. I'll never forget that stuff. I said, but, you know, I'm a pretty shy guy. I don't know anything about TV, you know. I said, what do you have to do to be on TV? He said, well, when the red light comes on, start talking. Hey! So I was in TV, and although I had no experience, I had the knowledge. And that's the key. The viewer forgot about the mis misplaced words and the, because it was the knowledge they wanted. You know, oh, that's why he did that dribble. That's why he made the pass there. That's why that guy did that. And that's what I was able to explain because I had the knowledge of, of my sport. So whatever sport you're going to cover. The more knowledge you have, the more believable you are. Because if you're interviewing a player or a coach, they know more than you do, right? Because they're in it every day. But if you don't know anything, it's like, what's this guy doing here? You know? But if you do a little homework and you know about the game and you ask a question that's like, wow, that's really a good question, they appreciate that. So they look at you in a different light than just some other college kid doing an interview. And coach Knight's had both that he's met kids who interviewed him, they worked for the IDS, the newspaper, didn't have any idea what they were doing, and that's the way he treated them. But if he understood that they were good at their skill, and they were uh, trying to do a little homework before they asked a question, it was a good question, he appreciated that. And most people will. And they give you a good answer, and that's what you want. If you get a good answer, you can write a good story. If you get a bad answer, even though if you're good, you can't write a good story. Um, so I was on TV for 33 years in 
Indiana, 33 years, 1979 to 2012. And, and that was a really important thing for all that I did. I was in the sales career and it helped for familiarity, but even more so in the restaurant business because people, uh, I've been here this morning, and I've had 10 people come up to me and say, I remember when you played here, I watched you play, I sat in the assembly hall and watched you play. And so it helps our business because they come in and get to see us. I have a few things on the wall there that uh, uh, that people comment on when they come in. And they often wonder, I wonder if the owner's ever here. And I'm here every day, lunch and dinner. And so they get to see me. Uh, young man, can you grab that just above your head there? Yeah, grab one of those. So I got these made up. This is the Sports Illustrated cover that you see right there. And I thought, what's a way I could use this in the restaurant to help the fans will come up to you and say, can I get an autograph? And they have a piece of paper and like, who needs that? So you give them this, which is a card stock, my picture there, and I had them put a blank space here right beside my name. And on the back, picture my son and I, he's a general manager, he's back in the kitchen, 28, he's doing all the hard work, okay? My job is to be out here in the dining room to talk to the guests and get them to come in. So my job is to bring them in, get the job to make sure they get good food. How was the food today? Was it good? Yeah, great. Yeah, really good. Good. So we have good food, we have a good environment, we love IU fans, and so that makes for successful restaurants. So I got him and I on there, we were training, so when somebody takes us home and they say, hey, look, I got a picture of the guy who owns that restaurant, What's it on the back? Oh, that's him and his son. That's where the restaurant's located, and that's their web page. Uh, right, we check it out. If you want to go there and get a lot of you be there, too, to get one, you, you one from him. So I called the printing company, and I said, uh, I want to get some uh, some pictures. Do you have a question? No, I didn't want to walk across while they were, like, right. She's working. You walk here anytime you want. You're working. And I said, I want to get a picture of my Sports Illustrated with a little white space for a signature. I said, how much would a hundred be if I ordered a hundred? It used to be about $85. I said, well, how much would 500 be? That'll last me forever. And they said, that'd be about $125. So, I mean, the 500 then, you know, that's a, that's a good business decision, right? Because uh, rational longer is cheaper. So, we've been open eight months now, okay? And I've already reordered another 500, okay? Because the first 500, we're, we're gone. We're gone. I had no idea if people would want it so much, little kids especially. Because they don't know who I was, but their parents know. Your parents bring them in here, and then you ask the little kids. And then, you know, you guys, all you have to do is Google my name now, see. In the old days, you had to go to the library and do research. Now, now you just Google somebody's name, you find all about it. So. And then the parents are Googling, and the kids are watching this. Say, yeah, here he is, look, see. So that's a good little marketing tool that we're able to use. So I keep these out here when people you can tell me how you fans come in. Um, there he is right there, the man, the legend, Scotty, the general manager. I just showed him your picture, so now they know. And uh, so he said, Dad, he said, see that counter right there? You stay on this side of that counter. I don't want you back there messing my operation up. I'll be back there, and I'll take care of all that. And I get to say hello and greet people and take pictures and all that. So. Um, that's been a good relationship. He does a great job. Um, so what I found out was all that time on TV, when you're in somebody's house 33 years in a row, in the middle of winter, watching Indiana basketball, it's like they're your friend. Because there they are. The mom sits in her chair, dad sits in his chair, they're watching the game. Okay? And then they come to see you and it's like, whoa, wait, I know that guy. And people come up to me all the time and say, hey, how are you? And I'm like, oh, that's right, you must be an IU fan because you see me in your living room because you're, you're like part of the family because you were there. And so that's been a big help in the restaurant business. We are the uh, top selling Culver's in Indiana after eight months. Nobody sells more than we do. There's 47 Culver's in Indiana, and some have been open 15 years, building a base, people coming, returning, you know? I've been open eight months. And people, it's a great town, of course, as I mentioned. People just come, coming in, and for whatever reason, we are way past everybody else in Indiana. I'm so, very pleased with the success it's had, and uh, look forward to opening uh, several more. Okay. Uh, that's kind of my presentation. What, uh, what questions do you guys have? Yes, sir. Being a sixth man helped you as a player, but what, but what else was there about that and about what Bob Knight mentioned 
you were that you were special at? So I never was a starter. I was always the sixth man. Okay, and. Um, uh, Sports Illustrated came to do that story about us. We had just become the number one team in the nation. So Sports Illustrated comes into your town and they do a story like, okay, how, how does this happen? How'd you do this? Okay? It was a big deal, February of 75. So the writer comes into town and he takes us out to dinner at different times. He's at practice. He goes to a couple games with us. He was a photographer who went to that game with us, took a Wisconsin picture there. And um, uh, we had a great coach. We had a great coach, but every number one team has a great coach, so they wouldn't be number one. And we had two great guards. But if every team has two great guards, you wouldn't be number one. And we had a great center, but every number one team has a great center. And we had two great forwards, and every number one team has two great forwards. I mean, been there, done that, no big deal. 